Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be giving you a breakdown of this animation I've put on Twitter and Instagram recently. I wasn't originally going to do a tutorial about this one, it was just a bit of fun, but so many of you seem to like it and ask for a tutorial that I thought, hey, let's do a quick breakdown. This is not going to be a full beginner tutorial. It's just a breakdown, I'm going to be using some of my own tools, but you might find it interesting just seeing how I quickly slap this together. So yeah, it's just an animation of a rotating cube, which has been subdivided. It's using the same kind of generative modeling effects we've used in our recent tutorials. It's infinite looping as well, so it returns to the same position in its rotation. And as it collapses down into a triangle, it then re-expands back out again and basically continues that loop. So I actually tried recording this video once already, but at some point during the tutorial, the recording stopped for the screen. So I'm going to have to do it all over again. Let's uh, go back to our original file. Obviously, my Blender looks quite different to the default Blender. In fact, I'm using my new tool called Modular Workspaces. It may or may not be released by the time this video goes out. But my startup file looks like this. I'm going to drag in a shadow catcher and unpack that. So basically what that means is whenever I put an object in the scene now we're going to get this lovely shadow underneath. I'm going to import my three point lighting setup as well. All this does is add some lights although sure while we're here I will show you how to make a shadow catcher like this on the floor because it won't take too long. Just press shift a make a plane give it a material of some kind and then in the object properties you want to go down to visibility and under here you want to tick shadow catcher under mask and what that's going to do is now only show you shadows which are falling on that object and you'll be able to see anything behind it as well. So when creating this effect, to get the generative modeling style going on the cube, I have done videos in the past showing you how you can construct that modifier stack from scratch. I typically work from my Biogen add-on. So under Mesh Effects, Parametric, and in the official pack, there's the hard service fasting mode. We've seen this so many times in my tutorials. You can apply it to selected. Let's turn on the subdivision surface modifier and it, you know, that's your starting point. You can give it a material, modify the modifier values, whoever you like. And then from here, we could basically animate the different modifier values and you know kind of get that animation going. The way I specifically did it for that animation was a bit different because I used the generators lab pack because I wanted the material and the remesh preset as well so I imported the template for that. Sorry this is skipping quite a few steps. Had my cube selected, shift clicked the template, control L, copy modifiers so I got the modifier stack that way and then I applied the imported bluish ambient occlusion material. From there I upped the uh, subdivision values and in this preset things are remeshed so it tries to like connect all the faces together but I don't specifically need that for this and also the remesh modifier slows things down quite a lot so when you're trying to decimate things uh, you want to have it somewhat responsive when you're trying to like preview the effect. Now if you want to copy down the modifier stack you can see the entire thing here like let me uh, zoom in. I've been using my uh, stream deck to try and like help do like live previews of different parts of the screen so it helps me with the editing process but it means I can like point things out as we go. So subdivision modifier first obviously to uh, turn the cube into a spherical shape. Let me just disable these I'll leave the uh, the rendered mode on but the subdivision one turns it from this to this like quite obvious. Then the displace modifier just displaces it. That's quite obvious. So you need to put in a image texture here. The Biogen does it automatically, but there should be a button to add a new one. And if I open the image parameters, you can see it's of the type Musgrave texture. So in here, you can basically create a generative texture, which is going to displace that surface. So I'm going to make it something slightly different with the scale. If we go back to the modifier afterwards, we can adjust the strength and you can see how it's displacing the shape there. After displace, we have decimate, and this is part of the randomization process to turn it from a triangle into something more complex, which is basically the original mesh. If you increase the subdivision levels, you basically have more of a refined mesh to work with and to displace. But for getting that kind of low poly-ish style, I think it's quite nice kind of working from something that's still relatively low. Let me hover around the uh, the free level. Then there's a secondary decimate modifier. This one is set to planar mode instead of collapse. And what this will basically do is like slice off parts of the mesh in a planar fashion. So this gives us more of like a kind of glitchy look to the mesh which I think is kind of cool for animations. After the decimate comes triangulate, which will basically kind of uh, tidy up the mesh in that kind of post glitch phase. So that's an optional thing you can have if you want. After triangulate comes mirror. So if you want to make sure that it's the same on both sides, you can use that. But I think having it disabled also helps with that kind of randomization look. Then we get to the edge split. What the edge split does is based on an angle threshold, it disconnects edge
edges, which means that based on the angle, if you add a solidify modifier afterwards, it's going to extrude the faces from those disconnected edges. So you can see that I've added a solidify modifier afterwards. If we adjust the edge value there, the edges are going to kind of grow across the mesh. After the solidify, we add a bevel just to kind of tidy up some of those edges. You can always shade the objects move if you like, but again, I think keeping it flat shaded kind of adds to that glitchy look. And then you also have the option of adding a remesh modifier after all of it to try and like connect the edges together and make a more manifold mesh. But again, that takes up a lot of performance time. So that's the stack. We've had a look at it before in other tutorials, you know, nothing too complicated and there's no real logic behind it. You know, you can do much more advanced systems like this using geometry nodes, more contextual systems. So this is, this is like 2018 stuff. But now let's animate it. So I'm going to replace my asset browser with a timeline. So what I'm going to do is we've got the um, end panel open here and I've reset the rotation to zero. So this basically helps us to simplify because we know that we're just going to return to zero basically in terms of rotation. Um, in the timeline, we've got these two buttons here, jump to end point which let us go to the beginning and the end of the timeline. So we want to make sure we're at the beginning. Then I'm going to right click the rotation values and insert keyframes. So we know that at the beginning of the timeline, we're going to be at position zero. Now I'm going to jump to the end of the timeline, make Z 360 degrees, and then right click insert keyframe. So at the beginning, we're at zero. At the end, we're at 360. And you can see as we scrub back and forth, it's rotating. So we're going to end up back in the same place that we started. But you'll notice that as we scrub back and forth, it starts off slow, then speeds up and then slows down again. I don't want this. I want it to be consistent. So it kind of, it feels more like an infinite loop. So by tapping A, we can make sure that all of our keyframes are selected. They'll be yellow when they're selected. We can right click interpolation mode, set that to linear. What that means is as we play the timeline, it's going to be a consistent rate. So rather than speeding up and slowing down, it's just going to be one continuous speed. So again, like as we reach the end, it just keeps on spinning like an infinite loop. Now we're going to do the same thing for Y. So Y is at zero at the beginning. If we go to the end point, I'm going to make Y 360, right click, replace keyframe. So now not only is it spinning along the X, it's going to spin or rather roll backwards on the Y axis as well. So you can see that happening there. I think simple rotating animations like this will be beautiful for demonstrating things like kind of like mineral shapes, you know? So I might do that one day. But now we've got that general animation going, I'm going to turn on denoising in the viewport because that might help us out a bit. The rest of the animation just comes down to choosing values in the modifier stack we want to change and then animating those on the timeline as well. If you've been around for some of our other generative modeling tutorials, you are so used to this modifier stack. In fact, I'm quite embarrassed explaining it again because I'll start to feel like a one trick pony. There is so much more you can do than this in geometry nodes with like kind of clever, smart and contextual systems. So I have so much more cool stuff to show you coming in the future. Um, so first of all, the displace modifier, the strength value is the important one for the animation. I'm going to right click on the strength value, have it set at minus 0.1. That's fine. Maybe if I go like somewhere like 80 or something, I'm going to toggle the auto keying button. So now if I have a value that's been keyframed, if I change it to something else while I'm somewhere else on the timeline, it's going to automatically key that now. That's quite extreme. That's a uh, change that to something positive maybe. Go a bit further along, make it something negative, further along. Oh, I quite like that. Let me make it a bit more negative. And then as we get close to the end to bring it back to like its original value. So it's now been adding those keyframes as I've been modifying them and moving along the timeline. So if I play that back, you're seeing the shape start to distort itself. It's displacing. It's going to get kind of like smaller and larger and kind of spike out in different directions. Now that's at negative 0.1 to start with. I want to make sure it's at negative 0.1 at the end as well. So negative 0.1. So we know that it's going to reset back to its baseline. So it's kind of like breathing in and out over the course of that animation. So it's going to be an infinite loop. So that's the thing to keep in mind as you're modifying values. You just want to make sure that they are resolving back to their original values to make sure that it's kind of collapsing and re-expanding back in the same way. So for decimate one, insert keyframe at one. Let's go to the end, insert the keyframe at one again. Uh, let's kind of just do some random values as we go through. Something higher, something like a bit lower, something higher again. So as we're randomizing this, we're just giving it some visual interest as it changes. 
throughout the course of the animation. Again, let's move down to decimate the second decimate modifier. Let's insert those beginning and end values there. And again, just have some fun with it. Scrub along the timeline, add some different values. If you want, you can take your time and kind of look how it's properly affecting the mesh. I'm just doing this a bit quickly. Like I'm not too concerned about getting it looking like amazing. Next up, the edge split angle. This is going to be quite an interesting one because this is going to decide like where those grooves and crevices and cuts are along the mesh. These things here, which give it that kind of very definitive detail. So edge split 38, let's set that as the default for the start and the end. Now, as we go along, let me kind of reduce that a bit. So at this point in the timeline, I thought there weren't really enough grooves. So I reduced the edge split to change that. Let me increase it for this point, I think. Decrease it by this point in the timeline, increase it for this one. So kind of, as you can see, we're kind of just like breathing those values into more or less intense directions, depending on what you think is visually interesting. But no matter what you do, because you've set the beginning and end values, it's always going to resolve back to the same value again. So we're going to make sure it's an infinite loop. And then let's do solidify. We'll probably make this like the last one thickness beginning end. Now we're going to modify that thickness value as it goes through. So this is where it's basically going to expand and collapse down into like a more simplistic shape. I think it's nice kind of having that variability. I think by this point it'd actually be nice to have like a few more crevices. Yeah, let's do that. You can expand and then I'm going to shrink you back down again about here. So you are nice and condensed. Uh, let me also make the material more reflective by reducing the roughness because when we have not much solidify action happening, when the shape resolves down into like a nice low poly thing like this, the reflection actually looks really nice, especially when we add the bloom in compositing as well. So it's quite complex at this point. I'm going to keep it tight there on the solidify. But as it comes back out, maybe I will expand that a bit more and then let it resolve back to its regular shape. So again, let's play that timeline. Nice reflective shape, kind of like growing and shrinking, kind of changing its displacement, changing its shape. It always resolves back to original. Now in the original animation, it started off as a triangle and then expanded back out. So maybe let's modify this to make that true. To make it a triangle, we'd need to turn the first decimate modifier down to zero. See, it's going to grow out from that. And then again, at the end, we want to make that zero. So now it starts from a triangle, expands out into a more complex shape, does its regular business. And by the end, it will collapse back down into a triangle. So that's how you do the animation. The rest of it is just a matter of choosing your export settings and rendering the animation out. For the animation on Twitter and Instagram, I just use JPEG as the image export format. A lot of people will tell you not to use it, but it didn't make a difference. When you're just looking at it on these screens, I was more concerned about just having a small file size. So it was easier for like Premiere to compile it together into a video. You can use PNG or OpenEXR if you want to be a bit more you know, careful about your exports. When you're just doing general social Social media posts like this, it really doesn't matter. And yeah, like I said, if we took a look at the original animation, let me bring that back up. You're going to see that there's some blooming effect going on. So the way we do that, if we take a look at my compositor nodes, is by using this here. So these nodes here, you can copy that down if you like. From the render layers coming in, a couple of glares, adding them together using the composite. I found that this setup gives you like more kind of careful bloom, more professional bloom than just using a single glare node. Uh, you can ignore the denoising and these other things. This is just if you wanted to do like post denoising and like, you know, replace render with that. Don't need to worry about it. So yes, that is how you create that generative modeling animation. If you wanted to copy that down, you know, make some really cool animations to show your friends, you can do that. But like I said, this is not really a beginner tutorial because I've skipped out some parts of the process, like, you know, some of the lighting, the scene composition there, but uh, you get the gist. Also, like I said, I've been using my Biogen add-on. You can get most of this going with the hard service faceting and the free version that's available on my website. If you wanted to uh, take a look and get your hands on some of our products, we got some free and paid stuff on there. If you like this video, you can check out some of the other videos on my channel maybe sign up to my patreon to get your name put on this piece of artwork i'm calling the hall of patrons and if you made it this far through the video i want you to put an emoji down in the comments so i can see who made it this far and i would like you to put the blue circle emoji because that's what i put on the original social media post if you don't know how to put emojis in comments then if you're on windows you can press the windows key and press the period key and then you'll get an emoji keyboard where you can choose an emoji so yeah thanks for watching everyone hope you enjoyed it show me your results if you do anything similar uh yeah have a great great day.